Hi, my name is Roman Khan. I'm going to teach you how to use Minitab by taking you through a worked example from my book, Minitab Exercises for Green Belts. By the way, that's available on Amazon. I recommend you work along with the example by downloading the data set from my website, RMK6 Sigma. And by the way, that's free. All the details are given below. Let's go when you're ready. So this is the third and last of a series of videos I'm doing on Gauge r and if you want to work along, you can download the data set from my website, rmk6sigma.com. If you're unsure about anything, you can go back to the first video. And in the starting section of my first video, I show you how to do that. Otherwise, you can follow the link at the bottom of the video to get the data set to work along with this exercise. The exercise scenario is as follows. So you're working for Carnage Motors again. The project is again to have a look at the tier two supplier of fuel tanks called Tanks A Lot Limited. On this occasion, you are helping tanks a lot limited by analyzing a gauge r, &R study on the measurement system that measures the fuel tank volumes. You have the results of the study in worksheet fuel tank two. This gauge r, &R study uses 10 randomly selected fuel tanks from the line designated A to J. Five operators designated as V, W, X, Y, and Z. There are three repeats in the study and we can use a historical standard deviation of two for the study. So it's your job to analyse the study and report results to Carnage Cars and Tanks Allot Limited. It has been agreed that the programme of work will include the following. So this one's in three different parts. So part one is production of a gauge run chart. Number two, estimation of which part has the largest volume tank and smallest volume tank from the gauge run chart. Number three, an estimate from the gauge run chart, which is greater, reproducibility or repeatability. Then in part two, Run the gauge r, r routine using the assistant and state what is the breakdown of gauge variation. What is the biggest issue? Number five, do any of the operators need more training? Number six, are any operators having trouble with any particular parts? Number seven, is the measurement system at least marginal? If not, what are your insights to improve it? Number eight, is a historical standard deviation of two realistic? Then part three, number nine, repeat the gauge r, &R routine using a lower spec limit of 95 and upper spec limit of 105. Is the measurement system acceptable for this tolerance? And number 10, overall, is the measurement system at least marginal? Can it be used? So what we'll do is go through the exercise and we'll answer each of these questions in turn. Let's get into that now. Here you can see I've got a new Minitab project file. I've loaded in the data from Worksheet Fuel Tank 2. You can download that from rmk6sigma.com to work along. Task 1 is to produce a gauge run chart, so we'll do that now. So we'll click on Stat, Quality Tools, Gauge Study, Gauge Run Chart. Come into Part, Operator, Measurement. Click OK. Right, so here's our gauge run chart. Task 2. Estimate which part has the largest tank volume and which has the smallest from the gauge run chart. So it looks quite straightforward this time. It's quite clear that B has the highest tank volume from the measurements and I has the lowest. So we can see the spread of measurements. So then we can make an estimate knowing the range of parts as to how bad the repeatability and reproducibility looks. So question three, estimate from the gauge run chart, which is greater, reproducibility or repeatability? So we've got operator designations of V, W, X, Y, and Z. We can see repeatability issues within each operator, and we can also see reproducibility issues as well, because they are slightly varied from each other. You can see with part A, operator Y seems higher than the others. I'm again going to guess that reproducibility is worse than repeatability. We're now on to part two. Run the gauge r, r routine using the assistant and state what is the breakdown of gauge variation. What's the biggest issue? Let's do that now. So we want assistant measurement system analysis, gauge r, &R study crossed. And we're going to put in operator part measurement and we had a historical standard deviation of two. Click OK. So let's have a look at the variation by source to see how the gauge variation breaks down. Total gauge variation is 27%. Of that repeatability is 21%. 
and reproducibility is 16.8. So I was wrong, repeatability is slightly higher than reproducibility. Number five, do any of the operators need more training? Since repeatability was the biggest issue, let's start by looking at the test retest ranges. So operator V does okay, has a fairly low range. Operator W appears to have the highest range of measurements. Not good. Operator X does well in terms of their range of measurements, probably the lowest. So operator X messed up with part B and if it done better on that, it would have done even better on their overall range. Operator Y messed up on parts A and F. And operator Z kind of did okay. There's three parts here that could have been better. They're part E, part G, and part J. In terms of reproducibility, we can look at the operator main effects. Yeah, there is some bias between the measurements. It's not too bad, but again, if we could align the operators, we would see an improvement in reproducibility. Part six, are any of the operators having trouble with any particular parts? Well, we can look at the variation breakdown and see that there's no operator part interaction term. So no operator is having a particular problem with one particular part. Number seven, is the measurement system at least marginal? If not, what are your insights to improve it? Well, the measurement system was marginal because it had a total gauge error of about 27%. And we've given our insights to make the operator ranges better to improve repeatability. Part eight, is a historical standard deviation of two realistic? Well, we can compare the historical standard deviation to the parts in the study. There's 150 parts. It wouldn't be too contentious if we compared the standard deviation of the study to the historical standard deviation. So let's produce a graphical summary to do that. Click stats, basic stats, graphical summary. Measurement, click OK. So the parts in the study have a standard deviation of 1.977. That's not far away from two at all. So I'm quite happy with the estimate taken for historical standard deviation. So now we're on to part three. Number nine, repeat the gauge R and R routine using a lower spec limit of 95 and upper spec limit of 105. Is the measurement system acceptable for this tolerance? Okay, so first of all, we open up the gauge R and R menu again and enter the specs. So it's 95 and 105. Click OK. Now to answer the question, is the measurement system acceptable for this tolerance? We can look at this decision bar and the total tolerance error is 32.4%. So the measurement system is now unacceptable for that spec. So if you want to tell good parts from bad, the measurement system is not acceptable. If you're just trying to improve the process, then the measurement system is acceptable with a gauge error of 27%. So question 10, overall, is the measurement system at least marginal? Can it be used? So that's a good question. Can it be used? But it depends on what you want to use it for. If you want to improve process performance, then you can use this measurement system because it is marginal at 27%. But if you want to use it to sort good parts from bad parts, then it is not acceptable and you would need to try and improve the measurement system. It still has the same kinds of errors and the same proportions, so it'll have more repeatability than reproducibility, and that's what you need to tackle first, probably the repeatability, to make the tolerance acceptable. Okay, hope you enjoyed that example. So that completes this example. If you want to learn more about Minitab, you can subscribe to one of my many courses on my new website, thinksixsigma.com. You can also pick up a free 365-page Six Sigma Greenbelt guide from my website, thinksixsigma.com. Let's continue to learn together. See you soon.